Um, my name is Polly Reynolds. I'm the head of adult services and archives. Is anyone new to the library or to the series at all? Just well, welcome. Um, we put on twice a year different um, entrepreneurship programs. Um, you can pick up the list of things that are going on here. I think we're just about done with this particular series. We have a few more things going on. Um, I want to point out an evening with Joe Polizzi. He's the founder of Content Marketing Institute. Um, so if you have any interest in content marketing, which is a huge, big thing right now, Joe Polizzi is the guy for that. That's Monday, April 16th at 6.30 PM. But just pick up one of these brochures. Um, I'm really excited to introduce tonight's speaker, Maria Jean Cola. Um, I think this is going to be a great program, I can already tell. Um, she is the founder and serial network, networker of Network 52. Um, she spent her entire career in business development and marketing, attending upwards of 25 networking events per month to meet new people, market her business, and further enhance her knowledge of entrepreneurship. So please join me in welcoming Maria. Thank you very much. Did you write that yourself? That was really good. I wrote it. Okay. So I'm full of the whole like corny jokes, you know, cheesy jokes things and all of that. Um, I am Maria Ginkola, and um, Network 52 is something that I founded. It will be two years in July of this year. And it is because I was going to 25 to 27 networking events a month. Do you realize how many networking events per month that is? It's a lot. How many people go to networking events? Okay. How many people go to, I don't know, three a month? How many people go to more than five a month? How many people go to more than 10 a month? How many people go to more than 20 a month? Okay. Right. It's a lot. Seriously. Um, I just started kind of telling this one story because it was something that occurred to me uh, before Network 52 was ever started. I was going to so many networking events, and I was so sick of the sticky name badge residue on my blazer or on my dress, and I was so sick of things coming out of the dryer and finding that like weird crumbled up paper, and you're like, oh, it's the business cards from the networking event. I completely forgot, right? But the one thing that got me was my now six-year-old son. I got home late one night, and he literally said to me, Mom, do you have another networking event tomorrow night? And I said, nope, I sure don't. I am not knocking other networking events. There's a lot of amazing ones out there. But Network 52 is something that I started because I wanted to be able to bring people to me. I wanted to be able to control when and how I networked. So one of the things that we will talk about is starting your own networking group. A lot of people think that it is absolutely impossible. How am I going to get this many people? I literally don't know hardly any of you. I know two people in this room, and one's because, you know, that's my other half back there who's hiding in the back, and I'm going to so pick on you. Everybody say hi to Steve. Yeah. He wasn't going to come tonight, and then he decided to rearrange his schedule and surprise me, but then we ended up just driving together, so it didn't work out. Uh-huh. Keep him away from the cookies, too. So I need, actually, who's the biggest guy in here that can tackle him if he goes after the cookies? We both compete in bodybuilding, and we are 30, now what are you drinking, too? Is there sugar in that coffee? We're 31 days out from our first of a couple shows this season, and we are not allowed to have cookies, and I guarantee I'm Facebook live streaming this. Our coach is probably watching this, so we'll keep him away from those. So anyhow, Network 52 is something we meet every uh, Thursday at noon, and we network in a very interesting way. You guys are all more than welcome to attend that. We'll get to that a little bit later, but for now, we are just going to talk about networking, and I didn't ask how to use this, but I'm going to take a wild guess and say that it just goes to the right. So what is networking? It's kind of the, the big question when all this starts out. This is going to be a very interactive kind of thing, just so you know. So somebody, you can raise your hand, you can shout it out. What is networking? Building relationships. I didn't even see who said that, but good job. Somebody else. Just so you guys know, if somebody don't, doesn't yell stuff out, I'm totally just going to call on you at random, and I'm literally going to walk right up to you. So, And give me another idea. What's networking? Anything. Exchanging information. Building relationships. Exchanging information. Give me another one. One more thing. Making introductions. There we go. Yeah, you go to a lot of networking events. I feel like I've met you before, though. Name? What do you do, Edward? Oh, very good. That's awesome. East side or west side or south. south? Perfect. Excellent. Good to know. Networking. The definition of networking is the exchange of information. Good job. Did you Google that? 
The exchange of information or services among individuals, groups, or institutions specifically, and this is the most important part, the cultivation of productive relationships for employment or business. So networking to me is building productive business relationships. You end up building friendships out of it. You end up growing your business. You end up meeting new people. But it's definitely building those productive business relationships, OK? Um, when you build a relationship with someone, you want it to be a two-way street. How many people have met someone, networked with someone, started to do business with someone, and it's a one-way street, right? We are constantly like, yeah, I'm going to refer to you, and you're going to refer to me, and it's going to be great. And you send them a bunch of referrals, and they don't send you any back. That's not a productive business relationship. That's them tapping into your mental Rolodex and basically getting in touch with everyone that you know. We don't want to do that. So one of the most important things about networking is mastering your pitch. So talk about calling on random. Mr. Networking over here, I'm going to really call. I'm gonna pick on you big time now. Tell me your name one more time. Edward Bender. I'm, because you're Mr. Networker to me today, it just, it worked. No, but seriously, you don't have to. If I call on you and you're like, no, I don't want to, that's totally fine. Just tell me that. And then afterwards, we can talk about it. Who is confident in their elevator pitch? Literally, we're in an elevator. I ask you what, what you do. Who's confident in theirs? Who can tell me what they do? Hey, why doesn't Edward go? Okay, see how easy that was? I'll give you that $20 later that I told you. No, didn't happen, never, never mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so very, very good, actually. That was good. That was not, hi, my name's Edward, and I'm with Edward and & and Associates, and I uh, am not in my own Facebook live stream. Hey, guys, I, um, I do insurance, and um, how many times do you go to an hour event, and that's how somebody says it? You need to be confident in what it is that you do. Does everyone know what they do for a living? Yes? Raise your hand if you know what you do for a living. Keep your hand up if you know your name. <laughs> Keep your hand up if you know what you do at your job for a living. Guess what? You can master your pitch. There's a lot of different ways to do it. So there can be a long version of it. There can be a short version of it. That was the short version of it. Okay, so for quick purposes, we're going to do, hey, everybody, my name is Maria Jane Cola. I am the founder of Network 52. I'm a serial networker, and I help people develop their businesses organically through networking. Easy, right? Simple. There's a long version of it. You're going to find out that I do quite a few different things. I also run two chiropractic biophysics clinics, and then uh, that guy and I over, over there um, have a life and health insurance brokerage. So they all tie in together, and I'm going to use a lot of different examples on how um, I network and how I kind of get us business and leads and things like that. Um, your pitch needs to be to the point and needs to be exciting. Don't do this. Oh, this is, oh, yeah, I guess I'll go next. I guess I'll stand up. You don't want to do that, I'm telling you. You want to be confident. That was very confident. When he stood up, it took a second, because he was like, why are you going to pick on me? But then he stood right up, and he smiled, and he turned around to the room, and he gave his pitch, right? It was fun. It was good to listen to. You want to believe in it. You also don't want to... Do the whole, you know, yeah, I'm working for this company, and I've been there for a while, and I'm supposed to be at this event because my boss told me to. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're there to sell a service. You're there to be confident. You're there to, you know, promote what it is that you do or promote yourself. Smile. Make eye contact. It's like Elf. I like smiling. Smiling's my favorite. Do you have a question? Yeah, I do. How do you decide which to lead with? So you said you do multiple things. Yep, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, I will give you some examples. I think it's a slide or two from now. Um, but the long and short kind of decision is what type of event are you at or where are you at or who are you talking to? And do you have the opportunity to engage in a full conversation? Or is it just like when we first started here and I said, did anybody talk to the person next to them? You didn't have 20 minutes to talk. You didn't have five minutes to talk. You know, you knew that it was like real quick. We were setting some things up up here. I wanted to get the iPad or you know the phone together. Um, so in that sense, when you first meet somebody quickly, you probably just want to have, "Hi, my name is Maria. I'm the founder of Network 52. I run a networking group in the Cleveland area." Boom, quick, right? Well, that's, the one you'll always lead with. that's the one that I need to lead with if I'm just quickly introducing someone. Now, 
if I'm at a networking event, which I'm actually really excited that not as many people came that signed up because it was going to be well over 100 that we had in signups, which was amazing and wonderful and humbling, and I love that. But we are going to be able to do one of my favorite things at the end of this, um, depending on time constraints. If anybody needs to leave early, you know, feel free. Let me know. You know you're not, I'm not going to be offended or anything like that. Um, but one thing I do want to do is if you do have to leave early, set your business card either up here or some, give, it, give it to one of the staff to make sure that I get it because I'd love to connect with all of you after this. Um, if anybody wants copies of the slides and things like that, we can get those too as well. Um, but for the long version of it, that is like when you're at an actual networking event and you get to do your 30 second or your 60 second elevator pitch where you get the spotlight to be on you and you get the chance to stand up. So for the sake of what we're gonna do at some point, you wanna have your short one ready. Um, I also have a friend of mine who is in Network 52. She's in my networking group. She comes regularly. Her name's Karen Kalis. Does anybody know her by any chance? Yes, no, maybe so. If you're watching Karen, shameless plug for you. Um, she actually does a free 30-minute coaching session for anyone that attends Network 52 at least once to master your pitch. So if you need help with that, she is more than willing to help you. So for me, another example of the long version, I told you guys you know, that I have the chiropractic offices as well. My long version is, hi, I'm Maria Gincola. I'm the director of business development for Aligned Health Centers. We're the first and only chiropractic biophysics clinics anywhere in Northern Ohio. We focus on structural correction of the spine rather than adjusting to make you temporarily feel better and send you on your way. Initial exam, consultation, and x-rays are completely free. When I say that, I'm not really reading it off. I'm just giving you an example of it. I can very freely speak about what it is and what we do in a way that's fun and that, that's exciting. So some of the things that I did in here, I tell you my name, I tell you my title, I tell you the name of the business, I tell you that we're the first and only chiropractic biophysics clinics. And so that's already like, hmm, I mean, everybody knows what a chiropractor is, but you're all thinking, gee, what's that? I tell you one little thing that we do, you know, kind of a little teaser, but then I throw in what? Initial exam and x-rays is completely free for all new patients. That piques your interest, right? If I'm standing here talking to somebody whose back hurts, their neck hurts, they get migraines, asthma, allergies, ADHD, heart issues, digestive issues, you know, their sister gets migraines, their mom, they're this, they're that. Can you tell that I'm networking right now and promoting myself as well? How many people in here are kind of like, oh yeah, I have those problems. But those are the types of things that you want to do. When you're giving your pitch and you're introducing yourself to someone, you're trying to get, a, to get a lead. You're trying to get business right then and there at that time. Now, shameless plug, if anybody has any of those issues, yes, you can schedule a free exam and x-ray at either one of my offices. We have them in Westlake and in Beachwood. So mastering your pitch is very, very, very important. Um, I would like to put a couple people on the spot. I want to know if there's anyone else here that is willing even to do their short version of their pitch. Somebody, anybody. Go for it. I love it. Very cool. Only thing I would say that you could do differently is, and I know you're just telling me because I asked, only thing I would say you could do differently, stand up, look at everybody, smile, say it like that. In that sense, you know, I'm just trying to hear it. That was very good. It was quick. It was to the point. Does everybody understand what he does? I mean, some of you guys might not have heard him. I should have given him the microphone. But yes, you, you've got it, right? Somebody else. Go for it. Now that is awesome, very cool. I've never heard of anything like that before. Anybody else? Go for it. See how that works? I love it. I saw somebody in the back was it like there see there you go I like it that's good you're good you are good trust me at the end of this you guys are all gonna leave here with at least one solid connection I promise you go for it
Awesome. Congratulations. That's very exciting. And so now all the insurance people that you're meeting here, we now know somebody that we can send to when we, re- when we meet the people who are uninsured. Let me turn this really quick because I see that I cannot hold myself still. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mom. I'm sure you're watching. Love you. Mwah. Um, my mom always watches this. It's so cute whenever I do anything like this. All right, guys. Does anybody else really want to do their pitch? Because nobody's had one that I'm going to you know, put you on the spot and say, you know, that's not good or you should change that or anything like that. No? Everybody's good? Okay. Let me give you a tip. When you're at an event, any type of event, especially when you're at something like this, there are... I don't know, I'm guessing 50 people maybe in this room, maybe not quite that many. I never claimed that I was good at math. You have the opportunity right now to stand up in front of all these people and make a good impression and tell them your name, your business, and what you do. Out of all the people in this room, there's probably at least one person that could be a good lead for you. So let me ask one more time, even if you are really, really uncomfortable and you know you have to step out of your comfort zone to do this, Is there anybody else that wants to take this very golden opportunity to tell everyone here what it is that you do? Go for it. (laughs) I love it. What's the town? Which I've never heard of. Got it. I love that. Very good. Very good. Are you are you part of that group with her? Let me hear about it. Oh no, not more pastries. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, where are you located? Are you in this tiny little town that nobody knows about, too? I am, but I'm also at the Hudson Farmer's Market in the summer, so come. Hudson Farmer's Market, so let's go see her. Um, do you, by any chance, um, know Lauren Kruger from Distinct CLE? Okay, remind me to remind myself <laughs> to get you in contact with her. She is someone um, that I've met through networking. Um, does, has anybody heard of Distinct CLE that makes the custom crates with all local sourced products? No? That'd be a very good connection for you. Distinct CLE. They hand make custom wooden crates. Yeah, they hand make custom wooden crates out of like pallet wood. They're beautiful. They make all kinds of, you know, different um, custom cutting boards. They're really good for gifts and things like that. But they make these crates and they fill them with all locally sourced products. So that would be a really good connection. Yeah, she's always looking for new people. So Lauren, if you're watching this, you can remind me of that too since I forget everything. All right, guys, so let's kind of keep going on. When you go to a networking event, I want you to set a goal, okay? From now on, for every single networking event that you go to, I want you to set a goal. So show of hands again. It's like we're in school. Like, show of hands, everybody form a single line. How many people came here tonight with at least one goal in mind? Nice. I like it. What was your goal? If it's not something that you can share, then that's fine. If you're here because, you know, not picking on you, not saying it's you. If you're here because, you know, you're single and ready to mingle and you're thinking like, hey, networking event, there's 100 people signed up, might find some good uh, business professionals that are looking to advance their career and you don't want to admit that, that's fine. But hey, you're a good looking person, maybe you want to say that. You never know who's going to be in the crowd. What was your goal? I love it. Just learn something new. All right, somebody else. There you go. Okay. Who's your social media gal? Her name is Ellie Norman. Ellie Norman. I don't know Ellie. Anybody else? Yes. Find out any peculiarities of the Cleveland networking scene. Oh, it's so weird on the east side. (laughs) Guys, I'm a west sider. I'm from Amherst. I opened the first clinic in Westlake three years ago, the Align Health Center Clinic. We've got patients coming in. I'm going to all these networking events. I opened the Beechwood Clinic. Thump. What? It was the weirdest thing ever. I had three people at my first Network 52 East East Side event. Um, Four weeks ago, six weeks ago, I had 52 people. 
Isn't that fun? 52, now we're 52 is my record. It's kind of cool how it works out. Yes, it's very strange on the east side. Don't, I don't know. I don't have the answer for you, but I can still teach you in the very odd events that I have gone to on the east side how to network at them. Who else had a goal? We will talk about that as well. Any other goals? I'm also asking this to make sure that if it's not in my PowerPoint or my presentation, I add it in, because I can probably tell you everything there is to know about networking. Go for it. OK, got it. One thing that no one has said, either you just didn't raise your hand for it, or you really didn't have this as a goal, was to make some new connections. Yes, you are at a learning series, an entrepreneurship series, you know, about how to network and how to network with an intent. But now that I've said it, and don't, no take backs now, don't raise your hand if you really weren't thinking this, but how many people really thought to themselves, wow, this could be a really good place for me to get some leads for my business? Steve, put your hand down. I told you that in the car. I said, make sure you have your business cards and you're paying attention because there could be some really good people here for you. Try that again. He doesn't count. Awesome. Good. Very good. Um, anywhere that you guys are, ask Steve, <laughs> this one, I literally network all the time, like constantly. I was at the gym yesterday morning, and I was literally in the middle of a workout, and one of the trainers, actually my coach, brought someone over. I was like in the middle of a set doing these like absolutely awful, you know, hamstring workout things. It was horrible. Mike, again, if you're watching this, don't make me do those anymore. Oh my gosh, it was bad. But um, he literally brought somebody over because he knows that I am constantly looking for new business. I'm constantly looking for new patients. I'm constantly looking for new insurance clients or leads or businesses that need us to do their um, group benefits and things like that. And people know this about me. They know that they can come up to me anytime because everywhere I am, I'm networking. I'll be networking. We'll, uh, the server at the restaurant will say something and I'm going to be whipping out a business card and you know trying to get business and things like that. So always set a goal. That's very, very important. When you um, know that you're going to a different type of event, whether it's a networking event, whether it is a speaking presentation, whether it's a seminar, whatever it might be, ask yourself, what do I want to get out of this? Don't just go to it, especially if it's one of the ones that you have to pay for, the ones that take up a lot of your time. Um, ask yourself what you want to get out of it so that you make sure that you are truly going to you know, achieve some sort of a goal. And you didn't just go there and think, yeah, I learned a couple new things and that was fun. Because even right now, at this point in the presentation, I have not taught you guys anything crazy and wonderful other than like, oh yeah, I thought maybe about this, or yeah, I thought maybe about that, or like, wow, Maria talks way too much. Other than that, that's as far as we've gotten. We're going to get into the nitty gritty of things, but I kind of need to know who I'm talking to here first. Um, you need to come up with a plan, and that's something that really just comes with experience. If you are new to networking, or if you're new to networking in a certain type of group, you really just need to start going to them over and over, and you really need to just kind of peruse the crowd and kind of keep your eyes open and see, you know, who's the clicky group and who's not the clicky group and who's the wallflower and who comes to the events just for the free beer and who comes to the events because their boss made them to. I promise you, once you get better at networking, these are things that you're going to be able to spot a million miles away. Um, there's a couple different things that you can do to stand out. Take giveaways and printouts, have an opening question ready, conduct a survey. You know, there's a lot of different things. So you know how I said I throw in that, hey, we do a free exam and x-rays for all new patients, kind of things like that. Whenever I'm at a networking event and I'm networking for Aligned Health Center, I carry around my free exam cards with me. And I actually write my name on the back of those cards as well as the name of the event that I'm at. And so when I meet people, I can be like, here, I've got this free offer for you. It's good for two free visits at either one of our clinics. You know what? Do you want, do you want another one for you know, your spouse or friend? Here, take a couple. Take five. Take ten. Give them all away. You know, things like that. You know, have something with you. Um, have a little sheet of paper, a little fun game. You know, if you have a hard time, did I just skip a slide? I clicked this. If you um, have a hard time with that introduction, do something fun. Carry one of those little handheld, like, you know, uh, game of life spinning wheels and change it to something else that might be, you know, a free pen or a free this or a free tchotchke and carry a little bag of things with you. I mean, do something to stand out. Conduct a survey. That's another really fun one because if you have some really fun and quirky questions on it, that's good. It's not, you know, it's not going to throw them off too much. But on that survey, what, what do you think I would put on my survey if I was doing that? Think. We're at a networking event. Why am I standing here conducting a survey? I'm not conducting a survey because I want to know 
the percentage of people that, you know, have been to the gym more than three times this week. I'm not doing it because I'm doing, you know, what am I getting on that survey? When was the last time you visited a chiropractor? Take it a step further. What else would I probably put on that survey? What fields would I have on that survey? Symptoms, okay, there you go, that's a good one. I'm still waiting for one more thing. Go for it. Personal contact information, would you look at that. Don't ask for their name, their address, their email, their phone, their this, their that, their other. Ask them to just jot down their name and their email at the bottom of it. Some people might not fill it out, but guess what? Some people might. And then, now you're not just taking that business card that you got from them after the conversation and trying to remember. You literally are holding a piece of paper, they checked off, yes, I have low back pain, Yes, I've been to a chiropractor, or no, I've never been to a chiropractor before. My name is Maria, and here's my cell phone number. They're not going to fill that out if they don't want you to contact them. But now, you have a way to contact these people. Hey, it was really great to meet you at that uh, Dave & Buster's networking event two nights ago. You know, these papers were sitting on my desk. I finally had a minute to catch up. Saw you said that you suffered from migraines. I am so sorry to hear that, but... Good news is, it happens to be one of our specialties. We've got some opening appointment, open, you know, like that. Can't talk too fast. We've got some uh, appointments that are open this week and wanted to see if you would like to come in. And now, you're not just calling off of a business card, you know? You are generating leads for yourself in a really, really simple way, okay? And then, you don't want to do it in a way that's like, hi, I'm Maria, fill out my form so that I can call you in two days and try to get you to come in for a free exam. Make it fun. Do something, you know, fun and quirky on it. Like I said, make it a little game. Hey, if you fill this out, I will give you a Reese cup, <laughs> just because I really like Reese cups and I can't have them for another month. Um, make it happen, okay? I have a really good story about a time that I was at a networking event. And it was at a, it was at a VFW. <laughs> I laugh every time I think about this. This is the most bizarre networking event that I've ever gone to. It was a lot of fun, but it was just so strange. They had a beer chugging contest. It was like an Oktoberfest kind of thing. Seriously, not even kidding. There was a beer chugging contest. There was a contest of where you like have to hold the mug out for the longest. You, what, does anybody know what that's called? You're nodding your head back there. You, yeah, like a hopper house, and you have to, you know, whoever can hold it out the longest. Um, they had, I don't even remember now. This was like two years ago. It was the most bizarre event ever. <laughs> but, and everybody was drunk. Literally everyone. So, we'll talk about that too. I, by the FOP. I know, right? Right, exactly. No, it wasn't. Um, it was a fun event. Don't get me wrong. It was a fun event. It did have a charitable aspect to it, but it was so bizarre. And it was one of those events that really didn't, do much networking. It was just like a fun after hours, you know, networking event that was like kind of put on. Well, there's me. I have three kids at home. It's this event is from whatever, 630 to 8 o'clock at night. I'm a half hour from home. I'm not going to get home until 830, maybe even a little later. I'm not going to stand here and hang out with everybody for two hours watching you chug beer and hold, you know, beers right here and doing whatever tchotchke little dance thing, river dance, whatever it is that they were doing when I could be home with my family, right? So I had already had my goal. My goal for that event was to schedule at least one lunch and learn. Does anybody know what a lunch and learn is? Yes, no, maybe so. Raise your hand if you don't know what a lunch and learn is. Okay, so everybody pretty much knows. It's one of the ways that through Aligned Health Center, it's a good way to get the word out. You know, it's a very simple way. I do this at networking events a lot where I'll say, like, let's say we were, you know, chatting in an event. You no, know, hi, nice to meet you. Oh, how many people work in your office? Oh, there's eight of us. Oh, great. Well, you should let me buy you lunch sometime. Oh, that would be great. Nobody's going to say no to that. You already got the yes. Because we do a lunch and learn series. You know, we cater lunch. We'll tell you a little bit about chiropractic biophysics. And then we offer everybody two free visits. Nobody's going to say no to that. It's, it's really a great way. If it's in your budget for whatever your business is, like over here, you know, you make pastries, you can do a lunch and learn about that, about how small businesses can, you know, thank their customers by, you know, putting together these really nice homemade pastry baskets or, you know, different cookies and things like that. You know, you can basically give lunch and learns. Everybody listens to you when you feed them. So I'm glad that they had something because usually when I feed people, they definitely listen more. My grandma taught me that. Um, but I'm at this event, and it was almost over, and it was awful, and I knew most of the people there, and I start looking around, and I look around the room, and I see this group of four guys sitting at the back table, and I was like, huh, I don't really know any of them, because I knew most of the people there, it was a local event, and so I'm like, 
Go for it, Maria. So I go over and I just plop myself right down at the table. And these four guys just look at me like, who is this lady? And I was like, hey, guys. And they're like, hi. They're sitting there drinking beer, having fun, like, you know, doing whatever. And I was just like, so what is it that you guys do? Would you know that the guys on this side owned a pizza shop and the guys on this side owned an auto body shop? So what do you guys think that I did? I said... Oh, you know what would be really cool? I've never met any of you guys before. I do a lot of catering for Lunch and Learns. Would love to get your contact information here from the pizza place. You guys, I've never met you before. You're right down the street from my Westlake office. Why don't we set up a Lunch and Learn for all of your employees? I'll have lunch catered by these guys, and we'll do this at your office. I was there two days later doing a Lunch and Learn to their entire their entire um, auto body shop. We actually ended up getting like three or four patients out of it, too. So my goal, I was not leaving there. I was not spending two and a half hours watching people do beer chugging contests and not being home with my family because I didn't achieve my goal, okay? So start to kind of think of different goals and different fun ways and unique ways that you can make something happen at a networking event. All right, my favorite slide. Has anybody heard this term before? You have? Anybody else? Only one person? You have? (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, it's not that um, <laughs> at all. Nobody's ever shouted that one out, but now I'm going to laugh about that every time I say it. This is probably the most important thing that we are going to discuss today, guys, and we're going to keep it clean. All right? We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're keeping it clean here. Do not spray and pray. Spray and pray is not collecting business cards and spamming them with content later, okay? So when I said to fill out the, you know, get a little survey to get people's contact information, that's not for you to go home, put them on your mailing list, and then just add them to your monthly or weekly newsletter. Do not go to an event and collect as many business cards as you can and go home and just stack them up on a mailing list. But also, do not go to a networking event, meet people, and go like this. Hi, I'm Maria. Nice to meet you. Okay, got to go. Hi, oh, yeah, I know you. Hi, I'm Maria. Nice, nice to meet you. Okay, got to go. Hi, I'm Maria. Nice to meet you. Got to go. No, do not do that. That's called spraying and praying. Do not spray your business card around a room and then go home and pray that everybody gets in contact with you. It doesn't work. All right? There's literally these two ladies, and I swear I'm going to run into them one of these days, and, and I've been giving this presentation for quite a while now, and I still have not had one of them call me like, are you talking about us? They go to networking events together, and they split the room down the middle, like two twin brothers that have been fighting, and mom and dad come and take a piece of masking tape and put it down the center of the room, and they're like, you stay on this side, and you stay on this side. That's how these women split this room, right? And they spend every networking event seeing who can collect the most business cards. Whoever collects the most business cards wins and has to buy the other lunch the next day. And then they go home, and they don't follow up with them, and they put them all on their mailing list. That does not work at all. I mean, maybe it does because they keep doing it. (laughs) But that is not what you want to do. You do not want to just try and get as many contacts as you can. It doesn't work. Remember back in the beginning, networking building productive business relationships, wouldn't you rather meet one person at a networking event that you have a half hour conversation with and the entire, spend the entire event talking to than meet 15 other people that you like, eh, I got their card and eh, it was okay and then I wasted this much time talking to them and didn't really get anything out of it or oh, the event's almost over and I really only got to talk to a couple people. It doesn't work like that. When you're at a networking event, it is okay to cut somebody off because they are going to latch on to you if you're nice to them and they don't want to be at that event or if they don't really know what they're doing, they're going to latch on to you and they're going to keep talking to you and they're going to keep telling you about what they do and then they're going to keep asking what you do and then they're going to want to talk about this. Just grab their information, say, hey, don't want to be rude, only got about 40 minutes left of this event, really want to meet a couple other people, I'll catch up with you later, okay? Okay, bye-bye. And, and keep moving on, all right? That is okay to do. Um, don't just leave with a stack of business cards. We talked about that. Same thing as, you know, not spraying and praying. Um, pull out your schedule and set something up. Literally the most important thing. Aside from setting your goal and making your goal happen, this is how this goes. We're actually going to do it. Okay. I got to put the microphone down and we're videoing, so I can't. I kind of need two hands here. So, hi, I'm Maria. Nice to meet you. 
That's okay. Oh, you're going to be good. We, we're good. What's your name? Christina. Hi, Christina. What is it that you do? Oh, my goodness. This is so perfect. Um, so I am Maria. I am the founder of Network 52. I run a weekly networking group. And what we do is we get uh, different entrepreneurs, people in sales and marketing, business owners, people in transition together. And I would love to have you come to one of our events. We actually have one to three job seekers or people in transition per week that come to our networking events so that we can get you in front of all these other people and have kind of the who do you know who type of conversations. You never know who's going to be there. We have had a lot of people get jobs through Network 52, so I'm telling you this really seriously. I'm telling you this just so you know. So if you can ever come, yeah, that's okay. So like, okay, so anyhow, what I just did there was two things. One of the things I did that it's hard to do because I have the microphone in my hand, but um, I am having this conversation with her and I am inviting her to do something, okay? I'm inviting her to set something up. Now, if she said something, and let's say it was insurance, picking on you again. You called out first, okay, it was insurance. And I know that we might be able to work well together, which we probably can. Do not discount somebody in the same industry. A lot of people think that you need to lock out your competition. One thing I never do at my networking group is lock out my competition because I have plenty of insurance agents, brokers, reps, whatever you want to call it, that come to Network 52. And I even have people say like, oh, you're in insurance. I probably shouldn't come. No, please do, by all means, because there's a lot of cross-referring in many, many, many similar industries, okay? So while we're sitting there talking, rather than just continuing to talk, we know that both of us want to continue moving on. It's, you know what, actually, are you free sometime later this week or maybe next week? Let's pull out our schedule and pull something up, right? And set something up on the schedule. If you're at a networking event, and you, if something's clicking and you realize that you have a good connection with that person or vice versa, don't be afraid to ask them to actually set something up. Now, let me ask you this. How many people, show of hands again, we're back in second grade, have their calendar with them right now on their phone or have a general idea of when they can be available? Okay, look around the room, guys. Do you pretty much have that with you all the time? How hard is it to follow up with people after networking events or after really meeting people in general and actually get something on the schedule. It's hard a lot of the times, unless it's you know a definite solid connection, right? Set something up. When I go to networking events, I am not shy by any stretch of the imagination to suggest a time and place to meet with somebody, to grab coffee, come by my office, when can I come to your office, things like that. Are you really leaving my presentation right now? And you had your ringer on? Tiss, tiss, tiss. I just like to pick on him because he never actually gets a chance to come to these. So, you know, when he said he was, it just had to pick on him. Pull out your schedule and set something up. That's one thing that we do at Network 52. I typically don't tell everyone this, but at the end of every Network 52 event, we actually go around the room and I make everyone pick at least one person that they heard speak and set something up with them. That is the reason that so many people come back. I've had over 650 people in the last year and a half come to a Network 52 event, and I have a 70 to 80 percent return rate. I promise it's not just because they think I'm a lot of fun to you know spend an hour to an hour and a half with. You probably get sick of me. It's um, it's been fluctuating lately between the east side and the west side. Um, average attendance is 35 per meeting every Thursday at noon. So the west side has been throwing off my average. Now, if we average just the east side, um, it's usually about 42 to 43. So it's pretty good. And then 70%, 70 to 80% return rate. So you figure, you know, for every 10 people there, two or three are actually new people. So it's not just the same people over and over again. So if anybody's a west side or knows anybody on the west side, kick them over there because we need to start growing that group again. I don't really promote it. It's just all word of mouth. Um, I mean, it's on Facebook and Meetup and things like that, but I don't advertise for it. Um, it's just, you know, kind of, it, it just exists out there. And for some reason, people keep coming to it. It just keeps working. So how to network an event. I've kind of talked about a lot of these things, um, but one of the most important things is to be present. Put your phone away and do not stand in the corner or be the bar fly. Now, you're at a networking event. It's already hard enough to approach people. You're not usually there in a buddy system. You're there by yourself. Where's the one? I can't use my phone. It's over there. Let's pretend this is my cell phone. I'm doing something right now on my phone at this event. How approachable do I look right now? You're not going to walk up to me. Put your phone away. 
keep your phone on vibrate in your pocket if you have kids or if you know you, there's an emergency or if you know somebody from work needs to contact you or something like that but don't stand there and play on your phone don't stand there and pour out you know looking through facebook and things like that you're at a networking event you are taking your own valuable time when you could be home you know getting some work done. You could be at the office answering emails. You could be home doing laundry. You could be catching up on Grey's Anatomy on Netflix, which I haven't watched in like four weeks. So if anybody has, no spoiler alerts because I've heard it's getting really good. Um, you know, be present. You're there. You want to dedicate your time to yourself when you're there, okay? So when you're there, zone in, focus, set your goal, know how to network, make some connections happen, leave knowing, patting yourself on the back, like, man, I made some really good connections, and I'm so excited. I have three meetings on the schedule for next week. This is going to be great. Minimize what you're carrying. Ladies, leave your purses in the car, please. Or don't even bring them at all if you have some irrational fear of someone breaking into your car at Dave & Buster's and stealing all of your most prized possessions inside of your purse. Don't carry a bunch of stuff around, all right? Also, what you're wearing is very important at a networking event. This is literally going to sound crazy when people see <laughs> and um, know that I do this. I actually did it to you, and I know that you didn't realize it, but I did it on purpose. I did it to you, actually, when I got here. Um, have pockets for easy access to business cards. I have give and receive business card pockets in my outfits for networking events. How big of a dork am I, right? So right now, I actually had to change my entire outfit that I had planned for today. I had the cutest dress to wear for this, and I decided to change into pants just so that I could show you my pockets. Um, I have a give pocket, and I have a receive pocket. I'm not telling everybody that you need to have to, that you have to wear slacks, that you have to wear dress pants. Um, you know, blazers that have pockets on the inside of them are good. Ladies, sometimes the dresses, you know, have, um, uh, have, excuse me, have pockets in them, um, a sling over the shoulder kind of bag, you know, that's easily accessible, that's kind of one of the flat, you know, like the, you know, the crossbody, thank you. Obviously, I don't have very many of them because I didn't even know what it was called. Um, something like that. Because what I do at an event when I meet somebody, it's the cheesiest thing ever, and I'm going to put the microphone down for a second just so that I can show you. I'm going to do this with you right now. This is what I do. Your healthcare professional. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about you. Oh, okay. Just making it up. Oh, well, that's fine. We can do that too. We make believe. <laughs> do you want to share with us what you do? Oh, very good. Congratulations. Very good. Is it something that you want to talk about network or is it like top secret right now? Love it. Very cool. Are you doing independently with another company? What company is it? I love Heartland. Love Heartland. That's so funny. I just had a conversation about Heartland today because I actually use Heartland and they are fantastic. So congrats. So you're going to be doing sales in Heartland? Oh, very good. Well, we'll have to, we'll have to connect you. I know a couple of the um, good reps over at Heartland and they have been fantastic. That's who I use for processing as well. So good choice. Anyhow, did anybody see what I did there? Shook his hand with my right hand and did what? <whistles> Sleight of hand literally slid my business card right into his hand and I didn't say a thing about it. I just did it. Was that awkward when I did that to you? No. You were just like, oh, she was giving me... You didn't even think about it. I didn't give you the chance to think about it because as I did it, I was talking through it and I was like, hi, I'm Maria. What is it that you do? So I'm giving him my card. I made sure that my card is in his hand, okay? And I asked him what he did immediately. I never just start talking about myself, contrary to what you might believe, I automatically ask someone what it is that they do. Honestly, I will ask somebody questions as long as I can until they finally ask me, what do you do? Because I am trying to figure out if right off the bat I have a connection in my head or a suggestion or an idea or a lead or a referral or something that I can give to them because the absolute best way to make a good first impression with somebody at a networking event is to give them something, right? And I don't mean a free exam or, you know, some cookies or a pen or some tchotchkes or a business card holder. It's to give them what they're there for, a new networking connection, okay? So I could probably do that. I mean, I kind of did do that. I actually didn't even mean to, saying, hey, I'll have to connect you with some of the people that I know at Heartland. You probably already know them or you could know them, but maybe not. You never know. 
Somebody else. I don't have any more business cards in my pocket. Somebody else that I get to put on the spot. Oh, no, actually, you can keep that because we're going to talk about that later, too. Is there anybody here that already had my business card prior to this? Did you have my business card? You did not. Okay. Steve, do you have any of my Network 52 business cards? You don't? There you go. Good job. Good job. All, I know, right? All the time, I ask people. It's so funny, too. They, they, you would think that after a year and a half, everybody would get this one. I catch people off guard. I'm like, do you have my business card? And they're like, yeah, I've got one. And I just say, why? And I just get this face, and they're like, what do you mean, why? I'm like, why haven't you given it away to somebody else yet and asked me for another one? I always tell people that because the back of all of my business cards, my Network 52 card has the contact information about the networking events. My Aligned Health Center cards have mentioned this card for a free exam consultation and x-rays. My insurance card has something about group benefits and you know an offer for a consultation, things like that. And I always give people two cards. Keep one for yourself for now to make sure you save my contact information. Do me a favor, give one away. And then when I run into them again, I'm like, do you have my card? Do you still have my card? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, why? Why, did you, why do you still have it? Why haven't you given it away to somebody? And I do the same thing. I always ask people for more than one card because I want to give people's cards away. I take pictures of them when I get home because I'll lose them if not. So say that again. Me particularly because my business cards have an offer on them. It's like a coupon. It's like a coupon. And not, everybody, not everybody's is going to have an offer on it, and that's fine. Um, but for me, you know, that's kind of my reasoning for it. Um, but now once kind of going back to the handshake, the sleight of hand, I give you my card, my card's in your hand, we're chit-chatting, we're talking. Um, my idea is to help you and to ask you questions and to see how I can help you network. I need to pick on somebody else. Who else can I pick on? Everybody's looking down. I'm just, no, I'm not going to pick on you again. I'm going to pick on, I don't know, this lovely lady right here. I'm going to pick on you. What's your name? Mary. Mary, what do you do? I'm a financial advisor. Financial advisor, awesome. Where at? Uh, well, I have my own office for myself. Very good, very good. How long have you been doing it? About 12 years now. Good. Do you live in the area? I do. I live in Hudson. Very good. Hudson's beautiful. I've never been here before. Where's the best place to eat around here? Uh, like around here, like literally around this library that we can go to after this. Right. Flip side, three palms. What's that? All right. On the count of three, everybody decide where Steve and I are going to have our cheat meal. One, two, three. Ooh. They're only open until nine. We'll, we'll be done by then, dear. It's okay. I promise. Okay. So, so we're talking. We're asking questions. I'm asking you where you live. Who's the best? Who's the best type of um, client for you? Oh, very good. Do you do any type of speaking engagements, or do you put on any community seminars or anything like that? Okay, are you looking for any more by any chance? Always. Always. Okay, I actually know someone. Um, her name's Susan. She's with the Chesterland Innovation Center. I don't know if you've heard of it, but she's always looking for different speakers. There's a couple West Side um, groups that are always looking for different speakers. People are constantly coming to me, you know, after I do speaking engagements like this, like, hey, do you know anybody else? So um, do you have one of your cards? Can I have one? I would love to. Um, you can give it to me in a little bit. You don't literally have to give me right this second, but make sure you do. Um, you know, and what I just did there was I talked to her for the first two minutes about what it is that she does. What do you do? Who do you need? What, what can I do to help you, right? She's probably now going to go, well, what is it that you do? And she's not going to say it just in that awkward, like, oh, my name's this. This is what I do. What do you do? We've had a conversation. She's comfortable with me now because not only have I shown that I have interest in what it is that she does, but I have also given her a referral or given her an idea you're not going to be able to do that with everyone. Usually I can. Usually I can come up with something, you know. I don't know if that's just because I have such a large network of people, um, but you can usually figure something out in some way to help people. Um, don't be a wallflower. <laughs> don't do that at all. Don't be at the networking event standing over here in the corner like this. <laughs> okay. 
you looking over there? Why are you there? Go home. <laughs> like, why are you at that networking event? You know what I mean? Get out of your comfort zone. You guys went there. You, you made the step to get there. Now, again, like I said in the beginning, if you went there because your boss told you that you had to go there, well, okay, fine. I guess I'll give you a free pass, but still have fun while you're there, okay? You know, do something um, to kind of, you know, stand out from the crowd. Um, go help a wallflower. Go find one. That's one of my favorite things to do at networking events, especially if it's an event that I'm comfortable at because I know people, right? So that's why when I give this presentation, like I said, this is the first time where I have not known a decent chunk of people. Usually I'm calling on them specifically to pick on them. So this is fun because this is introducing me to a whole bunch of new people. Um, but I'm not able to kind of grab these people and, and do a lot of the scenarios. But a lot of times, I'll look for that wallflower. I'll look for that barfly. I'll look for the person that's just standing there not talking to anyone. And I'll just march my little self right on up to them and just say, hey, I'm Maria. Are you having fun at this event? No, really? Not me either. OK, well, so what is it you do? I ask them the questions. I find out what they do. I try and you know offer something to help them. And then I go, you know what? Come on. Let's not, don't go stand over. Don't just stand over here in the corner. Let, let's, go, let's go talk to some people. I actually know some people over here. Who is it that you're here that, that, that you want to meet? Real estate agents would be good for you. You know what? I see my friend Ann over there in the corner. Let's go walk on over there and let me introduce you. That is a great way to help someone else. I'm a firm believer the more good you put out there in the world, the more good comes back to you, right? Go introduce them, and then guess what? When they see you at a networking event a month from now, they're going to remember how nice that was of you that you grabbed them off the wall when they were super uncomfortable and you introduced them to the exact type of person that they needed to meet and they're probably going to do the same thing for you. They're going to go, oh my gosh, Maria, who helped me? You know, I'm now here with this whatever dentist, you know, dentist office or whatever it might be and it would be really great for them to do a lunch and learn there. So let me go take you over there. You know, she does this really fun thing or she has this networking group or she does this or she does that. So you got to kind of keep that circulation of good things going. My favorite one though, this is my favorite to do, especially when I'm networking um, in the West Lake, the Beachwood areas, Lakewood, Rocky River, um, Pepper Pike, like areas where I do happen to know a lot of people. When I go to a networking event, I usually know a good percentage of the people there. I like to look for a group of two to four people where I know at least one person in the group, okay? And I march again, my little self right on up, and say, Let's say Steve is standing there talking to someone. And I would be like, hey, Steve, who are you over here talking to? And he would just say, oh, this is so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. Whether he's known these three people or it's three people that he just met, Steve's going to introduce me to those three people. Guess what that just became? A warm introduction for absolutely no good reason whatsoever other than the fact that he was standing there talking to them and already knew their names. So that's one of my favorite things to do. I really like to do that when it's somebody that I know that I've really helped before. Do you have a question? I'm not on my camera. That's okay. You can hear me. That's fine. Close enough. You can come fix it if you want. Come around that way. Um, so I like to look for somebody that I do know quite well, especially the one that I can walk up to and give that like big warm handshake or even like that hug to like, oh my gosh, Tina, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in like a month. How have you been? Sorry to interrupt, guys. Who is it you're talking to? Because now they see this, you know, friendly personality. They see these two ladies interacting. Who did she just meet? Maybe it's somebody that she does know. Maybe they're people that she just started talking to. Not really sure. But still, it's a warm introduction. And then I get to meet those people, right? You see how that kind of works? Rather than just walking up to the individuals, the people that you don't know, because let's face it, it's awkward. When you're standing at the networking event and there's like a group of people standing together, like it's weird to just walk up and interject yourself into the conversation. I do it. I mean, I have no problem doing it at all. And I actually make it awkward to make it unawkward or to be the opposite. I'll just walk right up and be like, hi, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I saw the three of you standing here and I just think it's easier to kill three birds with one stone. And I'm Maria and this is what I do. And what do you guys do? Like sometimes you just have to walk right up there, you know? You just start it off with that whole, I'm not trying to be rude, but, because then, you know, they can't really, well, they can. You can walk away and be like, well, that was really rude. She interrupted us. But you're at a networking event. So it's not. You're there to meet people, right? Just start talking to people. <laughs> You can't just not talk to people. Jokes aside, when we were first here, again, I understand you guys were here to listen to a speaker, to listen to a learning series. This is a networking event. It's an event about networking and how to network with an intent. I can tell you that if 
I wasn't busy sending Steve across the street to figure out where we were going to have our cheat meal, and I was on the phone with an insurance company and answering something from one of our offices, I would have been in here networking with you guys. Just like when I go to any networking event or any type of speaking presentation, engagement, I don't care where we are, I am trying to network with people. I am constantly networking. I'm taking my kids to the pediatrician, and I'm trying to set up a lunch and learn at the office. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I also will, like, overhear someone talking and think to myself, like, gee, maybe I can go help them, hey, don't mean to be invasive, but, you know, I see, I saw the way that you were lifting those weights, or I heard you talking about, you know, this, that, and the other. I'd really love to connect you if you're looking for a trainer or a dietitian. Like, I'm just constantly trying to connect people. It's definitely something that takes a while for you to learn, but it's possible. Give more than you receive. Don't expect to get more than you are willing to give. One-way streets and two-way streets. We talked about this in the beginning. Guys, especially in networking and in business. You can't be selfish. You can't be greedy. You really can't be like that in life as a human being in general because it just doesn't work like that. There's this little thing called karma, and I don't know how many of you believe in it, but if you really think about it, it's probably happened to every single one of us in this room in a good way and in a bad way. And you really need to think to yourself, how can I help other people? How can I help other people? There are so many different ways that you can help other people. And even just outside of networking and outside of your business and outside of whatever it is, any type of community event, volunteering, volunteering at your church, you know, stepping up to that, you know, position on the PTO that they really need and that one committee, you know, things, he's looking at me like, no more PTO committees, Maria. <laughs> uh, we just got an email thing that was like, we need a new treasurer for the PTO. And I was like, no, I can't do it. I told them I was going to tell them my checking account's always overdrawn or something like that, so they tell me that they don't want me. Um, but my best connections have come from people that I helped. So remember how I told you guys when I'm at a networking event, I really like to go up to somebody that I know really well and give that big warm hug or handshake to and be like, oh, who is it that you're talking to? Because they're going to turn around and go, this is Maria. She's fabulous. She's helped me with this, 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 and this. Okay? I have done a very good job uh, especially on the west side, because that's where it all started, of building a good positive name for myself and for the businesses for people to know that I am helpful and that I'm kind and that I am going to try and help you and I am going to try and help make good business connections. I'm always asking people who good referrals are for them. Um, you learn a lot about people when you ask questions. That's just like being on a first date. Do not talk about yourself the entire time. Did I do that on our first date? I did. That's the thing. No. Which first date? I know, we had three. It was funny, we met on Tinder. I love telling people that because nobody thinks that that actually works, but it did. Um, so ask people questions. You're gonna learn so much about them if you just ask them questions over and over and over again. New people, every time, new questions. Ask them about their business. Ask them who a good referral is for them. Ask them if they've been to this networking event before. Ask them where they do business. Ask them if they are looking for anything in particular. Da, 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 all those types of things, okay? Because the more questions that you ask, the more information you're going to very easily get out of them. Listen, people are not going to walk up to you at a networking event after you introduce yourself to them and say, hey, I'm here because I'm a real estate agent and I'm really looking for um, you know, people that are looking to sell their home in Hudson. Chances are they're probably not going to just blurt that right out. But if you ask them like three or four questions, what is it that you do? I'm a realtor. Oh, where? Hudson. Oh, okay. What's your niche? What's your specialty? Oh, I'm really looking for more people that want to sell their houses in Hudson. Oh, great. Fantastic. Well, I happen to know people that are looking for a house or, you know, I don't know anybody in particular, but maybe I can make a Facebook post and kind of share something on LinkedIn or whatever it might be. Be an engaged listener. That's the other thing. Going back to the whole phone, putting the phone thing away and all of that. Um, when you're talking to someone, again, in general, in life, I'm not trying to be like your motivational speaker here and like teach you all the life lessons, but dedicate that time, it's minutes, dedicate that time to that person. Talk to them. If your phone rings, if you're waiting on an important phone call, it's fine. You can, you know, excuse me one second. I'm so sorry. This, looks, this phone number looks like it might be my, my child's school calling. I got to grab this. Nobody's going to get mad at you for that. But if, you're, if they're telling you about what is it you do and you're just kind of like <clears throat> looking away, like uh, you're not going to get anything out of that person. Just You might as well just throw that one out the window. Um, and you might miss something that they say that's really, really important. Like 
when she was telling me everything that she did, I could probably repeat back, and it's been now, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes since she told me that? I could probably repeat back everything that she told me that she did. I know that she's a financial planner. I know that she works um, for herself. I know that she works in this area. I know that she specializes um, in wi uh, working with women, or she enjoys mostly working with women, and that she really wants to um, meet with people one-on-one -on -one and individually because she wants to help them learn the areas of finance and investing that only they need to know because there's this whole vast world of you know finances and investments and they don't need to know everything but she wants to get to know each one of her clients and teach them exactly what it is that they need to know right is that pretty close yeah so I listen to people when they talk and my memory sucks too but I try really really hard to remember that I still forget your name it happens it's bad <laughs> I'm teasing I'm teasing no I am bad with names though I don't know. Benjamin. I really, Edward. Was it really Edward? I, at first I thought it was Edward, and then I was like, oh my gosh, Maria, you're going to say Edward, and it's really not. So just say something goofy like Benjamin, but I like that name too. Take notes on their card if needed. I promise you not a single person will get mad at you if while you guys are talking, I don't care if you met them 10 seconds ago or 10 minutes ago, you pull a pen out and you go, you know what, hang on one second, let me write that down, I don't want to forget that. Would you get mad at me if I did that? No. You would be happy. You would be like, and it might even be a subconscious thing, but you're going to be like, wow, that was so thoughtful that she actually just took the time to stop and write that down because I said that I was looking for people that want to sell homes in Hudson, and she really wanted to remember that. I really like that. Kind of like the cookie thing. Like if I had your business card, I would write a little note, distinct CLE, so that I remembered when I get home to go ahead and do that. Um, People always ask me all the time, Maria, how the heck did you get so many people to come to Network 52? How did you build this huge network of people? How do so many people know you? Apparently nobody in Hudson knows me, so I've got to start something out this way. Um, obviously, I have my networking groups in the areas that I own businesses. Um, we hold them at the Aligned Health Center offices because why would I not have 30, 40, 50 people a week walking into my business, kind of? you know, make sense of why I hold it there. But um, how many people heard about this or any other networking group on meetup.com? How many people know what meetup.com is? How many people have no idea what it is? Quite a few of you. It's not a dating site. That's what it sounds like. Well, there are some like, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s professionals, mixers and things like that. Um, Meetup.com is something that I highly recommend every single person in business is on. It has so many cool events and usually they're for free. Um, if you are thinking about starting your own networking group, whether it be for just the sole purpose of networking to do it like I do. Um, Network 52 has no charge whatsoever for people to come. I do this every single week. I don't intend on charging for it. I don't, you know, uh, lock out competition or anything like that. If you want to do something different for your networking group and charge a fee for it, you certainly can. Um, but for uh, starting a networking group or starting any type of meetup group, it's free to do. So an example, I'm going to use you back here again. Tell me your name again. Financial. Oh, Mary. Mary. Okay, I told you I'm bad with names. <laughs> I'm holding a Dale Carnegie course on um, name remembering pretty soon if anybody's interested in attending. Um, so Mary, a good idea for you for a meetup group would be like, um, I don't know, Financial Fridays. I told you I'm corny, right? And then like Fridays, like at 5 o'clock, hold like a happy hour event the first Friday of every month or something like that promote it on Meetup, and give, you know, free initial kind of, you know, financial advice to these people. Or maybe you can do like a small business Saturday for somebody who's in small business, which would be good for you, Mr. Hartland over here, because every small business needs to have a payment processor, right? So hold a small business. I see you chewing a cookie again, Steve. Mm -mm -mm. So hold a small business Saturday meetup, right? So that would be a good one for a Saturday of every month, you know, and maybe you, maybe you bring somebody in, maybe through your networking efforts. Every Saturday you bring in, um, say, somebody who does group benefits, you know, somebody who does chiropractic, someone who, you know, something like that. And you have this event. You can rent out rooms at like a Panera or um, even do something like at a Starbucks, a lot of libraries, places like this, places where you can even do it for free. Um, you don't necessarily have to, you know, buy food for people and things like that, but I'm telling you at Panera to buy like an assorted cookie tray and like one of those boxes of coffees is like 20 bucks, okay? You're probably going to make your money back on something like that. And then it's kind of helping you to start your own group. 
So be consistent. People tell me all the time, Maria, you're everywhere. That's why my business card says serial networker. It started as a joke. Everyone kept calling me a serial networker prior to starting Network 52. And then when I formed Network 52, they really laughed and they're like, you really are a serial networker. You should put that on your business cards. And so I did. I tried to patent it, but my IP attorney said we couldn't. It was a thing. <laughs> what? Nah, I'm not a serial killer, I promise, though. No. <laughs> serial networker, I don't know. If, if you can come up with a better one, I'm open. I'm, I'm all ears. Um, go to as many networking events as possible. And I know that in the beginning of this, I kind of said, like, oh, I went to way too many networking events. That was me personally. If you have the time, if your schedule allows it, I promise you guys, networking works. I hardly pay for any type of advertising. We're doing some Facebook um, sales funnels right now, which is working really well. Um, I've done a couple things in, like, the Mimi Vanderhaven magazine. Uh, done a couple radio and TV things. Very, very small things. But I have built our businesses ground up organically through networking. I'm telling you, if you just get out there and you meet people and you make a good name for yourself and you do good business and you provide a good service, it is possible to do. Um, you just have to do a lot of it, especially in the beginning and startup phase. Consistently attend events that have worked well for you in the past. A lot of times people think the opposite, which they also think about, um, you know, Oh, no, I already went to that one last month. I'm not going to go to that one again. No, it's the exact opposite. You want to be consistent at these events. You want to continue going to the ones that have worked, with you, worked for you before. You can build trust without direct relationships. People are more likely to trust a familiar face, all right? Say hello to people that you've met before, whether it's someone that you did business with. Maybe it's just somebody that you saw. I said hi to you when I saw you here, you know, and, you know, if there's anybody else that, that were to come in, you know, that I've seen before, and I even said, you look really familiar. I think I've met you before. That wasn't a trick. That wasn't, like, you know, me just trying to, like, make a conversation. I really feel like I've seen this gentleman before. Um, same thing. If there's somebody that you've done business for, somebody that you connected with at the last event that you set up a meeting with, too many people at networking events, tell themselves, nah, I've already talked to that person before, I'm not gonna go talk to him again. No, if you had a good connection or a good conversation with them, go talk to them again and ask them the same questions again, but try and get more out of it and vice versa because especially if you help them, they're gonna be more apt to help you. And in terms of trusting a familiar face, if you guys were at a networking event and you saw the same person three months in a row, let's just say it's a monthly networking event, and you just saw this same person, but you never talked to him and you never met him, and you saw them walk, walking around, working the room, smiling and talking to people and making connections and things like that, do you think that that person, when they walked up to you, you would have a negative response to? No. You'd be like, huh. I've seen them here a couple times. You might even say that. Like I said to him, that wasn't even pre-planned. Like it was just, you know, oh yeah, I've seen you here a couple times before. We've just never had a chance to, you know, had a chance to connect or we never really bumped into each other. You were on this side of the room. I was on that side of the room. Be that person that's present over and over at that event and be consistent. Have your phone away. Be making connections. Be smiling. Help other people walk around the room because people are going to notice that. Just like any other thing in life, not even in networking, be the life of the party. Be the life of the networking event. Be the person who is, you know, shouts out that funny little joke, you know, when they're talking about something or like network. <laughs> if you guys come to Network 52, you'll see it's hilarious because people shout things out all the time. Sometimes I have to like wrangle everybody in. I'm like the teacher and I'm like, hang on, we're going downhill, guys. But it's because we have fun. It's not boring. It's not sitting around a table or like our square tables and Sitting down, Maria, you have 30 seconds. Hi, my name is Maria, and this is what I do. Ding, 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 next. And then we, by the time you get around to this side of the room, you're like, are we done yet? Like, that is not fun. At Network 52, people love me or hate me for two different things that we do, and one of them is that I call on people at random. You guys sign in when you come into the networking event, and I call on people at random to do your elevator pitch. Why do you guys think I do that? There's two reasons. That's not it, but keep going. Kinda, keep going. Yeah, to get you to pay attention, for sure. 
If you don't know when you're about to get called on, you're probably not going to be completely zoned out. Trust me, people aren't. It's hilarious because I'm like, Joe, Joe, hey, Joe. And then everyone's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was out of it. I'm like, I know, your turn. <laughs> Did you have one, Steve, that you wanted to say? What was the other one? Oh, OK. Um, so that's one. The other one for me personally is because, again, I mentioned that 70 to 80% of the people have been to an event before. I do know them. I do study up on everybody after they come to the networking event. I connect with them on social media and things like that. So I'm constantly in my head trying to make the next connection. So if a realtor stands up, a logical one might be, you know, a, a lender next. You know, somebody's there from a bank or a title agency or something like that. Or sometimes it's outside of the box, like someone that, you know, makes, you know, cookies or pastries or something like that. If Lauren from Distinct CLE was there, the two of you might not yet, she might be thinking, oh, locally sourced products, but you know nothing about about her. So after you talk about that, I might call on her. And I don't make it so obvious that people realize, oh, I see what she did there. But I'm kind of going through trying to make those connections. And sometimes I'll go, that's awesome. I actually have somebody, hey, Lauren, tell us what it is that you do. And everybody in the group's like, oh, I get it. But then it creates that quick connection right there. And now it gets people excited because they're like, oh, my gosh, there was just like a live networking connection right there. I wonder if I'm going to get one of those. And then it kind of keeps you more excited and, and on your toes and things like that. Um, ABC, always be connecting. You guys know where I got that from. If you're in sales, I know you've seen, I know you've seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. But um, ABC, I like to say, always be connecting. I am constantly networking with people. You got to keep doing it. I'm telling you guys, you can continue growing your business if you do. Following up is a really big one. Um, somebody, who raised their hand and said that that was one of the things they wanted to learn how to do? Yes, following up. All right, so remember how I told you about getting people's business cards? I have another pocket, usually it's a front pocket or maybe it's a purse, briefcase when I first get in the car or if I'm going throughout my day, um, it's just in my portfolio that I have um, where I put in business cards for people that I meet throughout the day. Another really good one is, and I, my phone's over there and I actually don't have it. Steve, hold your phone up. Other way. On the back, do you see how it has that card thing right there? He's got his debit card and ID in it, but you're supposed to use those, in my opinion, for business cards. You can either have your business cards or um, if he wouldn't have got me this beautiful Wonder Woman case that I thought he'd be very disappointed that I didn't have on my phone for Christmas, um, I would still have my case that had the section where I would keep the business cards in that I uh, collected throughout that day. And every night I would make it a point when I got home to sit down and do a few, there you go, you got it, do a few different things um, where I would first go on LinkedIn now, I heard you say about taking a picture. There's a really cool app out there. It's called CamCard. I know there's a ton out there. CamCard, I like. Do you have one that you use or do you use CamCard? I think it's 99 cents on the App Store. I don't think that one's free anymore. I think it's, it's like a dollar. Um, there are some free ones, but you can literally take a picture of a business card and it will automatically scan all their contact information and save it into your phone. So that's really nice because you can also export things from your phone, iPhone and Android, into like MailChimp or your database, your CRM database, whatever it is that you use. Um, but one of the things about following up is make it a point, whether it be the end of your work day, that night, every Thursday, every Friday, I don't care when it is, the sooner the better, to follow up with the people that you met that day. So some of the good ways to do that are obviously um, on social media. How many people in here are on LinkedIn? How many people feel that their LinkedIn profile is optimized enough and it is wonderful and it is up to date and it has everything on it that it should. Okay, that wasn't very many people. So, talking about some networking. TL Champion, the owner of Champion Studios, another person through Network 52, does a free consultation for LinkedIn profiles. She will help you revamp your LinkedIn profile if that's something that you feel that you need help with, which if you didn't raise your hand, it is something that you need help with, then you need to let me know. While we're on the topic of LinkedIn, how many people are very, very happy with their professional headshot? Raise your hand. Guys. Oh, hey, then I'm not going to do the plug that I was going to do. All right, forget it. Sorry, Alex, if you're watching. What's your name, sir? Larry Spinter. Larry Spinter. Are you in this area, Hudson? Spencer. Spencer, I'm sorry. Cleveland. You're from Cleveland, so you're, you're around. So do you do business headshots? I sure do. You sure do. Do you... On location, I like it. Right to the office. Do you care to share pricing, or is that individual? Is that something that depends on what they need? Right now, I have a promotion which, for a couple hundred bucks, two twenty-five, I come to you, do multiple shots, and pick three files. 
awesome. Okay, everybody hear that? If you don't have a professional headshot, you need to contact this guy right here so we can talk about that later. He's got a special right now. He's going to give you multiple edited shots. If your LinkedIn profile picture is a selfie, that's a big no-no. If your LinkedIn profile picture is you sitting in the front seat of your car, that's a big no-no. If your LinkedIn profile picture is anything other than a professional edited business headshot, that's a no-no. The worst one ever though, please. Is yours changed, Steve? Yes, it is. If you are standing in a bathroom mirror, <laughs> and that is your, I, honestly, I don't even care if it's LinkedIn. Don't take a selfie in the bathroom <laughs> at all and put it anywhere at all. I don't want to see it on your Facebook. I don't want to see it on your Instagram. I, I Snapchat, I guess. Like I have one from earlier in the you know last week that was really cute because I had a dress on and I didn't have anybody take a picture of me and I thought it was really cute and so I was like, oh, look at my new dress. And I was happened to be in the bathroom and I took it. But I'm not going to make that my LinkedIn profile picture. It looks really, 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 really bad, you guys. Please have a professional business headshot. It's the equivalent of having a professional business card, a professional website, a professional outfit on. Just, I mean, the way that you present yourself to people is huge. Um, but when you go home after a networking event specifically, and this really kind of goes for your whole day, but after a networking event, go onto your LinkedIn that you know looks absolutely fabulous because you have a wonderful headshot from this fantastic photographer and you've talked to my friend TL and you know that your LinkedIn profile is like, wow, it looks great. And you're going to send them a LinkedIn connection request. So who did say that they're happy with their LinkedIn at least that they, I'm not, I'm not going to pull it up or anything, don't worry, but who's happy with their LinkedIn or knows how to use LinkedIn? Okay, so give me the scenario. So you and I meet today, right? Let's just say you adapt this going home tonight and connecting with everybody that you met at this networking event on, on LinkedIn, right? So tell me how you're going to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm look you you're looking me up. Send me, send me a message. Yes. Totally didn't expect that. You win. Ding, ding, ding. I don't have anything to give you, but you do win. Guys, $20. there you go. Split the $20. When you guys connect with someone on LinkedIn, how many people know that you can click to send that connection request and it just automatically sends it out? Yeah? How many people see the nice little rows of three or four people and you go click, 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 because you want to add a bunch of new connections? It's okay, I've done it. All right, but you know you can do it, right? When you send a LinkedIn connection request or when you receive a LinkedIn connection request, do you understand the difference that it makes when there's a personal note attached to it? Huge. So huge. I don't care if it is one sentence. Hey, it was really great meeting you at the Hudson Library tonight. Let's connect. Copy and paste it to the other 10 people too. They're not going to know. I don't care. All right? That is huge, you guys. If you just send click to link that, that connect, you got nothing. Here's the other cool thing. LinkedIn actually just changed this. Mm, quote me if I'm wrong. You'll probably know about a year ago. Um, that now, if somebody sent you that message with the request, after you've accepted the LinkedIn request, it actually pops the message up. It pops a little message bubble up, or it'll stay in your unread messages. So now you've established a dialogue with those people. I always ask a question, because you guys know I'm big on asking questions. Because if you just say, hey, it was really nice to meet you, let's connect sometime, Doop, and then end it, they're going to accept it, they got busy. But if you say, hey, it was really nice to meet you, let's connect sometime, are you free for coffee tomorrow or someday next week? Now they have to answer a question because then they're kind of a jerk if they just like accept your LinkedIn request and then leave that sitting in their inbox. So ask people a question. Always leave it very open, you know, open-ended so that they have, there has to be another action. Um, the other thing is, too, you know, when you connect with somebody on social media, then, you know, you're constantly staying in front of them and vice versa. Facebook, that's a touchy one. Some people do not use Facebook for business. It's perfectly fine if you do not. Um, I am an open book on Facebook. Yes, you guys can all add me on Facebook. You're basically going to see pictures of me at the gym. You're going to see more pictures of me at the gym. You're going to see me complaining about things at the gym. You're going to see pictures of my kids, and you're you're going to see pictures of Steve. That's pretty much everything on there, including um, you know, my networking events and business stuff. I'm not very much fun on social media, but sometimes I'm funny. That's about it. But 
everything's positive. You're constantly seeing you know, positive things and it is staying in front of you. And it's the same thing with LinkedIn. I'm constantly sharing um, job seekers posts and I'm, I'm you know, congratulating people on their new jobs and posts and things like that. You wanna do the same thing. So keep social media very positive and follow up with people on social media afterwards. Um, handwritten note is huge. Show of hands, how many people remember the last time they received a handwritten note from somebody in the mail? Received. Does anyone care to share with me what it was, whether it was business or personal? Yes. Thank you for a birthday gift. Back there. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. Was it handwritten? Okay, not just not just a printed one that has like, you know, the logo on it, but and then says like thanks that that kind of thing. But I'm talking a handwritten note. Yeah? I love the Target bins, at, uh, the clearance bins at Target because they always have those blank postcards and those blank notes and stuff like that. I have so many different kinds of just like blank notes. I actually just bought a bunch at Target when I was shopping for somebody's bridal shower. I was in the clearance section. I'm like, oh, look at all these blank notes. There are these ones with funny pictures on them. And I like to, when I go, you know, when I go home after I meet somebody, after, you know, I sell an insurance policy, after we get new patients, something like that, write a handwritten note and send it out to them. Because there's like literally no better feeling in the world when you get home and you open your mailbox and you're like, bill, bill, spam, bill, another bill, utility bill. Oh, what's this? Someone's handwriting. And then you open it and you're like, oh, someone else's handwriting. Oh, they like hand. It is just so thoughtful. It does not need to be written out like crazy. Now, you hate your handwriting, you think this is a horrible idea, you just don't want to do all of this, there's a little thing called send out cards. How many people know about send out cards? Yes, how many people don't is a better question than I guess. Okay, so send out cards is, um, is a website, company, program, whatever you wanna call it, that allows you to make um, custom greeting cards and also send all kinds of gifts and postcards and big cards, those big giant ones, and they have the best brownies ever. So good. So, so good. You can send those to people, right? You can send these cards. So a fun one is like, um, I, again, we'll, we'll use an example of uh, insurance, um, got them set up on some universal life policies and they told me that they were just getting ready to go on vacation. They're going to Tampa in about a week and a half. And so I sent them a card and put in a gift card for a little pizzeria that's going to be by them with, um, you know, a picture of, you know, the Tampa Beach on it. Have so much fun in Tampa, da 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 Now, that wasn't a handwritten one. That was a send-out cards one. But still, it's that extra thought that counts. I'm not telling you to send a handwritten card to every single person you meet at every networking event or your hand's going to fall off and you're going to run out of money because you spent it all on stamps. But those handwritten notes are huge. So after you really meet with someone or do business with them, send them a handwritten note. It's a good one. If that doesn't work for you, try send out cards. If you want to sign up for send out cards, let me know. There's like different, like, you know, coupon discount code or whatever. I can give you mine if you are interested in that. Um, phone call is always good. You know, he's picking up the phone to call somebody, but let's face it, this day and age, we're all busy. We're all running around. Um, for me, email or text is better. Things stay in my inbox until they get answered. Text messages, LinkedIn messages, Facebook messages stay unread until I know that I can answer them. I get a million phone calls and texts and emails a day from all the different things that I do. Um, and I love them all and they're great. It's very hard to keep up with. I don't usually do phone calls because then I end up on the phone with people for forever because they want to tap into my mental Rolodex of all these people that I know and how I do this and how I built that and can you connect me with this person and that person. So usually, usually I try and kind of keep it electronic. Um, email, like I said, is obviously another good one. Stop by their office. Don't do it creepily. If it's just somebody that you met at a networking event and you know, you're know you a single guy and you met a single girl and she works at a title agency, don't just stop by with like you know some cookies the next day because then she's going to think you're hitting on her. But if you did some business with someone or, for example, please don't bring me cookies, um, stop by my office and bring me some of your cookies. That would be a very, very thoughtful way of you know saying thank you, that was great. Da, 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 whatever, but it's also getting you in front of me. You know what I mean? Stopping by and just saying, hey, is a really good one. <laughs> this is my favorite one. Still can't figure this out. Does everybody know who this is? Are we in the right generation here in the room? Dawson's Creek? So confused. 
Network 52, we meet every Thursday, every Thursday at noon. We meet bi-weekly per chapter. Are the dates correct? Did I do this right last night when I was exhausted? I did. Um, if you go to network52.com, there's a calendar of events. On that calendar is the Network 52 schedule. It will always show you where we're meeting. If for some reason a meeting's canceled, which knock on wood in a year and a half, I have not canceled any. Um, Steve will run it if I can't make it. But um, we would love to have anybody that wants to come to that. I'm really trying to grow the West Side chapter more too. So like I said, if you guys know anybody on the West Side, would love for you to come over there. But I would like to know who has questions right now before we kind of end with our little mini Network 52 event here. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I actually have a couple different people, so make sure you grab my card and shoot me an email asking me that question. Definitely. Any other questions? Yes. No, I know exactly what you're, you know, exactly what you're saying. There's a really, really, really big difference in asking someone questions because you genuinely want to be able to help them and you're asking them questions to find out things about them versus you're asking qualifying questions to make them a lead or to convert them to somebody that you're going to sell something to. There's a huge difference. If I walk up to somebody at a networking event and I ask them, do you have back pain? Do you have neck pain? Do you have this? Do you have that? I'm trying to get you as a patient. But if I'm asking you questions about your business and you and what it is that you do, completely different. Yeah, somebody else raised their hand right there. Yep. I just want to reinforce a couple things. Uh, one is that um, I attended uh, the Network 52 meeting last week. Oh, I didn't even recognize you. I'm sorry. There were so many people there. See, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, everything that she talked about actually occurred in this meeting. I mean, she kept it interactive. Here goes another 20 bucks. <laughs> Did I? Oh yeah, he said he's he's great at what he does. Oh. He does the West Side event, but um, you know, it was a great opportunity to meet people in all different venues uh, and and um, occupations. And, uh, it was really enlightening. Well, thank you. I appreciate. It. I'm sorry I didn't even recognize you sitting there, and now I do. <laughs> Let me get it all shuffled. Where's mine? Oh, this is yours. No, this is the other person's. Somebody else's business card and has your writing on it. And you go, oh, oops. Yep. It, it basically makes you look like an idiot. You look like an idiot. It's true. It's true. Uh, it Absolutely. I saw another question go up right to your left. What do you mean? Uh, elaborate on that so I understand a little bit better. Got it. Okay. So, no, you definitely can advertise on social media. Um, I advertise on Facebook. It's like I mentioned, I don't do a lot of advertising. One of the things that I did get into last October um, was uh, Facebook funnels. And the, the company that I work with works specifically with chiropractors, but I do have a Network 52 member. Um, her name's Shana Misko. She works with Radical Reach. I can connect anybody that's interested. She's a social media expert. I'm actually in an eight-week course of hers right now that she ran special for Network 52 members, teaching people how to advertise and promote on social media for your business. She's absolutely fantastic. She'll do it for you, or she'll teach you how to do it. But there's a lot of different ways. Facebook ads are absolutely incredible. Um, I will not not sugarcoat it. They can get really expensive. Um, I spend about four thousand dollars a month on Facebook leads, but it is more than worth it in you know the the ROI. But um, you know if you're a small business or something like that, you can spend you know a hundred, couple hundred bucks a month on Facebook ads and and really generate some good results. The way that those work are. Um, kind of different, b based on different algorithms and things like that. So has anybody ever, you know, you know, you've been thinking about maybe 
I don't know, getting your teeth whitened or something like that. And then, like, all of a sudden, as you're scrolling through Facebook, you see, like, the ad about, like, whitening your teeth, and you're like, that's so weird. The government's watching me. They're not. It's because at some point in the last week or so, you probably typed into Google teeth whitening Cleveland, and then it was saved in your browser's cookie and cache, and then, you know, it's going to show up, and that's how, that's how those ad, ads work. So I actually do highly recommend um, advertising on social media if your, budget can, if your budget can allow it and you do it the right way or you hire the right person to do it. So look for somebody that specializes in social media or Facebook marketing. Any more questions? Yes, Steve. Yes, I do. That's his nickname for me. Imagine that. Is that it? Is that all? Elaborate. Elaborate. We did talk about this. You weren't listening. You weren't paying attention. I don't necessarily mean, when I said be the life of the party, he calls me COA, center of attention. Imagine that. You still love me, though, and you're still with me all these years later. Um, no, don't, don't be the obnoxious person at the networking event that's like, you know, hey, I'm this person, hey, I'm that person, you know, popping around like that. But yeah, definitely act like you're having fun, even if you're not. Do you have any idea how tired and exhausted, let's even talk about right now. Let's talk about the, you know, how exhausted I am and the fact that, you know, we get up early in the morning, you know, same, same for Steve too right now and the same for a lot of you in this room. It might not be this specific way, but we have families, we have jobs, we have kids, we go to the gym, we go to yoga, we do this, we do that, we have our different activities. I get up early in the morning, I do my fasted cardio, I get the kids up, I get them breakfast, I get them off to school, then I go to the gym and then I come home and then I work and then I work some more and I work 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 in all these different things, right? And then I get home, the kids get home from school, we make dinner, we get them to bed, then I work some more and then I work out some more and then I, I'm exhausted all the time. I'm having a bad day. Something's not going right at work. When you guys are at an event, take that frown and turn it upside down and have fun, seriously. Not necessarily always being the life of the party, center of attention, but have a good time. Networking events are actually a lot of fun. Like you have the opportunity to be in a room full of people where you are gonna make a lot of new connections and you're gonna grow your business and grow your network and meet new people and make new friends and new connections. Don't go to them thinking that it's gonna suck and it's gonna be boring or it's going to be. You guys have any other questions? I have one thing I wanna do before we wrap up then. All right. Second thing that people love me or they hate me for at Network 52. Where are we at on time? I can't see. I don't think my watch is right. Oh, there we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Very short version of it. I do not need to hear all of the different products and services that you offer and all of the things that you do. Let's be respective of each other's time. I want you to tell me your name. Name your business. And like no more than two sentences. I like how running. Are you running away because you don't want to do it? I'm sorry. <laughs> it was nice to meet you. No. Um, so name, business name, two or three sentences tops on what it is that you do. You guys are in a room full of people that just sat here. For, oh, well, do you have this? Do you have that? You know, to try and kind of help that person along. If it's ever a job seeker, I'm always telling you to make sure your LinkedIn profile is up to date. Make a status update. Send me a message that you've done it. I will share it. All of my Network 52 members know that when they see that, that they share it as well. That spider web marketing kind of thing. Um, I'll do the same thing for anybody's business. Bye. See you at Network 52 next week. Um, but... Um, what we do is go around the room and pick at least one person that you want to connect with and meet with because of time constraints and because this was so quick. Um, we're not going to do that today, but if you don't have to run right now, hit your remote start, look for your car out the window, you know, let your car warm up and hang out here for you know, 10, 15 minutes or however long they give us until they kick us out of the library. And network with somebody because I already heard that there was a bunch of connections. There's a connection over this way. There was a connection this way. There's, you know, all these different things. So I hope that you guys got something um, good out of this. This was the first time that it's been pretty much a group of complete strangers, which was a lot of fun for me and challenging in some ways, but thanks for being good sports. And if I can help you guys in any way, let me know. I end every Network 52 meeting with my absolute favorite quote. I'll end it tonight. It's live like no one else now so you can live like no one else later. And I relate that to the calendar that's on my website. Um, we are working on getting a beef back up this year. It just got really crazy over the holidays. Um, I publish a networking calendar that, of course, has the Network 52 events on it, but also Cleveland area, you know, all the way out, east side, west side, south side, networking events that I recommend people go to. It's color-coded by if they're free, if uh, there's a cost to attend, or if it's free to go as a guest with a cost later. 
red, green, and yellow. It's pretty easy to figure out which ones are which. And um, I always challenge everybody, pick an extra networking event or two over the next couple of weeks or month. Do that consistently for a couple of months and see how it changes your business. Because I promise you, you can definitely build businesses organically through networking. Thanks, guys.